Hi folks, welcome to this week's uh, watercolour short. Uh, this time I'm going to be showing you how I painted this scene here. This is actually uh, my own, uh, a photograph of my own painting, the original painting. Uh, my name's Howard Jones and I do uh, online tutorials um, alongside these uh, YouTube um, demonstrations and uh, videos that I upload. Um, I'm going to zoom in on this and refocus a moment so you can see it a bit better. Whoop. Let me just... There. Um, so uh, originally worked from a photograph. The photograph probably had these boats in a slightly different uh, arrangement. Uh, so I sort of put this arrangement together uh, as I thought it made a, 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 a better balanced scene. Um, but I'm going to show you, because these are short, and I try to keep these Tuesday um, demonstrations videos as short as possible. Um, so I'm going to demonstrate at least one of these little boats. If, this, if I feel there's time, I'll, I'll, I'll put another boat in. So um, this is what I'm aiming for. Um, so... Um, Make yourselves comfortable and uh, I'll get on with the job. So I'm going to try to keep this. There's a slight gradient on the beach here, very subtle, but the sea was over to the right and the beach just sloped down ever so slightly. So, um, so when I'm painting these sort of uh, scenes, my ideas go to keeping things as simple as possible uh, you know, when we're drawing, it's always best to try and uh, place all your shapes in the most simple shape as possible within, by, sorry, by starting with the most simple shape as possible. And I see this more or less as a, as a rectangle, an oblong, if you like. Um, they're quite shallow in, in the hull. So I must be careful not to make them too deep, otherwise they'll look like mini ocean going liners. It's very important if you're putting a slight angle on a boat for, when you're viewing it from the side like this that the mast that comes out of the deck must be perpendicular to the boat not to the land. So if, the f if, if you could flatten the ground out here it would be uh, you'd see a slight it would make this angle here slightly diagonal on the bottom of the boat because it's not parallel to the flat level. So the mast has to be um, perpendicular to the to the boat, not to the not to the ground that the boat's on, or not to the flat that the that of the of the land. So I think it's about there. So it's just off off the perfect vertical. I think that would be perfect vertical, and we're looking at a mast that does that, a slight shift to the right like that. And it's very important that otherwise it's going to look really really wrong. Um, when it comes to the rigging that we can place in here and the paraphernalia that, that adorns these these ropes and masts and things that that's just um, that will leave that open to sort of interpretation if you like. So I'll pencil in a second boat whether we get to paint it or not I don't know. We'll say it's a little bit further down the beach there like that of course, three objects would always look better than two. So, um, you know, just bear that in mind. I'm just keeping it simple for the sake of getting through the timer um, of the demonstration, the time of the dem demonstration. So, right, um, it might seem an odd thing to do, but I'm gonna start with some detail. And I've got a very good pointed nylon brush here. Ultramarine blue and burnt sienna. And uh, I'll just make room for a little boy, buoy here. One of the, those things that they use, like sort of on the fenders. Obviously, when they're mooring up, it protects the uh, gunwale of the boat. So this is a very dry brush technique here. The paint is very dry, and with these hard surfaces, this is what we get. We get this sort of effect of 
hard reflective surfaces by uh, keeping the paint mix very dry. So just making sure I've got plenty of paint on there because I, I have a method by where I use that paint and also along the bottom here same sort of delivery sometimes a bit the, the paint's a little bit wetter there's a bit more water in it than other times but it's very important to for this deliver to be a sort of hit and miss on the surface of the paper I'm using not surface so it has got a, a texture um, I don't like using for the loose style I don't like using smooth paper the hot pressed it's, it's either I, I prefer this not not or uh, rough rough is also great paper sometimes for I like the rough surface papers for landscapes in particular um, so, so I'm just really putting in rough ideas of where in these sort of blocks and tackle that we see adorning these little vessels so uh, some indication as to this broken still wet sand Like this. I think we'll leave it like that for a moment. And I'll use, I'll put the mask in freehand and probably regret it. <laughs> Now, I've got to put a wash over this sky, so really, I, I, I'm going to lose some of this stuff. But we'll, um, we'll let that dry off for a moment. And I'm going to tackle the lovely, rich, sand, sandy colour with a bit of reflection. So, I'll pick up the big mount... Uh, sorry, uh, what is this brush called? It's called a mop brush, <laughs> sorry. And there's a colour missing here, so I'm going to just pick up some light red, Winsor & Newton light red. And I'm going to really swamp out this foreground. But I'm going to work from the bottom up. And that, what that allows me to do is um, create the drier brush marks when we get nearer to the boat. So plenty of paint, plenty of water. Let's have a bit of alizarin crimson in here. More paint, more, uh, sorry, uh, light red. Now this is where I need to control the amount of water that we've got. So I'm going to take the brush over to my water tub and squeeze a lot of that paint out. I'm, of course, when I'm doing that, I'm, I'm squeezing out not just the, the paint, but I'm squeezing out the water as well. So just be able to, that allows us to make this lovely broken delivery here. I can always take more of those colors up, which I'm going to do. But I'm going to be very careful not to um, not to obliterate this lovely sparkling area. Okay, so I'm now going to go into um, the hull of the boats. So, picking up a small brush here, the same one I was using for doing the detail, and I'm just going to deliver some water 
to the hull. And I'm going to pick up that lovely cobalt turquoise here and feed that in to the boat hull. But what, I, what I'm also doing here is I'm teasing into that dry paint that I used on the gunnels because that encourages pigment to drift into the um, into the hull of the boat, making making it look smooth surface and uh, far more interesting than it might if uh, if we were painting wet on dry with one colour. Okay, so the same thing over on our furthest boat, perhaps a little less water in, uh, sorry, a little more water in it. Being careful to skim over the top of this nearer boat and leave a little white slither of light above there. And um, I'm going to pick up a, a flat brush and with a bit of the blue, both blues, ultramarine, cobalt, and a little bit of the light red. And I'm just going to drag some reflections off the bottoms of the boats here into the sand. Like this. Might need a little more strength that. So Just bring a little bit of this. This is still wet down here, and this is why I'm able to do what I'm doing now. So it's a little bit harsh, the division between those two reflections. So I'm just going to soften through a little bit. There, that's better. And now before I do much else, I'm just going to put a, a, a cool sort of wash. I think we'll just offer up a little bit of warmth in the sky before I do that. Perhaps about here, just some warmth. I need to get straight back in now with the colour that I want to use in the sky. So I'm cleaning the brush very quickly, picking up some ultramarine blue and going over sort of being careful-ish not to paint into my mast but I can repaint it, that's the thing a little bit of extra warmth down here perhaps like that and now I think this is a job mostly for water from here on in I like to sort of pull my skies up like this in certain s situations. This is one of them. By pulling, by having some subtle vertical movement like this in the sky, it echoes the reflections that we see vertically in the sand. So I'm just staying out of the tops of the little boats, leaving some white paper there. And I'm going to pop a little bit of um, orangey like colour. So I'm mixing up a bit of ultra, uh, sorry, a bit of um, alizarin crimson with the light red. In fact, I'm going to just bring in a little bit of scarlet for these 
boys here. And we'll just, perhaps there's one there. I'm going to speed dry this. I think we're on about 20 minutes at the moment. So uh, let me just speed dry this and see if we can bring this paint to a conclusion. And I think I can finish this now with not too much detail. Small brush with a good point. The ultramarine bluebird sienna. Uh, so a couple of extra little details. The sort of paraphernalia that we'd expect to find around on these little vessels. A little slightly darker area under the... Um, underneath the boy. And uh, very nearly there now. Turn my attention to a bit of white gouache for a moment. I'll just add a little bit of white gush to the uh, top of these little boys. It's paling them off a little bit on that illuminated side where, where they're catching. These are sort of made of nylon, I believe, so like a plastic nylon. And they, uh, they have hard surfaces, so they certainly reflect the light. Um, I'm also going to use the rigger brush with a bit of this white. I can imagine some ropes coming down off the side of this little boat here. Perhaps mooring ropes, perhaps something catching the light. I have to put my mask back in over there, which is fine, I can do that. So let's get back, stick with the rigger brush, but change the paint. So I'm just picking up again a little mix of uh, ultramarine blue and burnt sienna. I'll take a little bit of that cobalt, uh, cobalt turquoise as well, I think. Now. Uh. So a little bit more of this information here. Hold my breath. Put the mast in for that chap over there. Mooring rope off the front end maybe. And I think that's where we will leave it. So let's put the mount around it and uh, see if it's see if it's any good. I'm just thinking of a little hint of a reflection. And through here, and the odd little line striation here. There we are. Right, I really must leave it be. Okay, so let's put the mount around. 
And there is a, a more recent version of something I painted years ago. I say years ago, probably about uh, two, two years ago, something like that. Um, enjoy painting these sort of scenes. Um, originally it was from a photograph and um, I've lost the photograph, I think. I've, oh, it's on an old computer somewhere. And uh, it was nice to revisit sometimes these things that we've done in the past. You know, it probably needs a third boat, and I think the overall balance is better. But uh, I wanted to keep this um, watercolour short, as the name implies, as short as possible. Uh, so I hope you've enjoyed this one, folks. Um, please remember to subscribe and to uh, perhaps hit the uh, bell icon if you want indication as to when I upload uh, my new videos each time, each week. And um, even better, if you could actually uh, share, there's a little sort of symbol icon at the bottom of the screen, I believe. Um, you can share my videos, pass them on to friends and colleagues, etc. Um, thanks for watching. See you at the next one.